Good morning, church, and welcome to Resurrection Lutheran Church, alive and online. We are honored that you've invited us into your home and into your lives. We come to you from our sanctuary here on Plank Road in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Welcome to all those who have joined us from near and far already. We have folks checking in from the great state of Mississippi. If you're turning, tuning in for the first time, we extend a special welcome to you. We encourage you to interact with us through Facebook chat. We want to hear from you. You can put in your prayer requests in the comments section that runs on the right of our Facebook feed. Be sure to submit them by the end of the sermon. Today we continue our worship series, Broken, Good News for Tough Times. On the altar, you'll see our church's Bible, our first cross when we got started 30 years ago, with a piece of broken pottery. Each week, our worship series will rejoin one more piece as you can see it's beginning to come together. Leading us in worship today are Allie Beck, Terry Evers, Alex Johnson, and Chuck and Ann Price. In the booth, we have A.J. Beck, Robert Schul, David Norquist, and Jeff Slunt. And I am Pastor Heidi Moore. So get a cup of coffee and join us as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship of the one true God. And join us as we sing the call to worship all are welcome. You can find the words in the bulletin or on the screen. And again, welcome. Let us be. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, who, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves, and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, Lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope. For hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our piece today is brought to you by the team captains. Once a month, all the chairs of our various committees and teams here at Resurrection Lutheran Church meet together, either, well, virtually now, as we discuss our plans for the coming month and what's going on here at RLC. The peace of the Lord be with you. 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 The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you.
also with you. Join us now as we sing our gathering hymn. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also, also with, with you. you.
Together, let us pray. Faithful God, most merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Join us as we sing and listen to scripture. A reading from Romans, the eighth chapter. That the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Word the word of, of the Lord. Lord.
these weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. And the slave said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then Jesus left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. And he answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of king of the kingdom, and the weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is at the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and evildoers. And they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite the kiddos to join me. Um, Come close to your screen and as I come and sit down. So I have two packages of mints. I have a package of sugar-free mints, and I have a package of winter green, regular old mints. So one is sugar-free, and one is uh, fully loaded with the sugar. And so I took those mints out, and I, pu- and I pulled one out of each bag. Now tell me, which is which? You can't, can you? And to be honest, neither can I. You know, that's just like those weeds and those wheat that Jesus talked with us about, that the weeds and the wheat looked identical. You could not tell them apart. And so the the people who were tending the field were upset. They thought at first that the master had not Um, bought good seed and so there were things growing in there that they weren't supposed to be growing in that field but they got tended along just with just like the the wheat did so what this reminds us of is that we have immense freedom that we are to love the weeds and the wheat just like God loves the weeds and the wheat and in the end God will figure it all out We don't have to, and that's good news. God calls us, and Jesus shows us that we are to love everyone, no matter what. And when Jesus says all, he means all. The sermon is entitled, Labor Pains. God is here. Jesus is with us. The Holy Spirit leads us, and we are children of God. The tomb is empty. Jesus is Lord, and all means all. And our earth groans. And quite frankly, all of this is hard work. Now, when I was was a child, the most dreaded chore was weeding the flower beds. My mom did not believe in mulch. So out we went, my older brother and I, with the instruction to pull up only what was bad and leave the good plants alone. Now, we didn't have a whole lot of money growing up, and so my mom bought flower seeds and scattered them in the flower beds, marigolds. See, marigolds are easy to grow, and they repel mosquitoes, which was a really good thing because we had a swamp about 500 feet from our back door. 
And about the time that my mom planted the marigolds, the ragweed was blooming and spreading its seed around too. Now my younger brother was a chronic asthmatic and allergies would trigger the attacks. And he was especially allergic to the ragweed, which seemed to be in abundance in West Point, Virginia. Now, my younger brother was never sent out to do this chore, and for very good reason. And so, my older brother and I went out and sent out to distinguish the marigold seedlings from the ragweed seedlings. Now, <clears throat> even if I thought about using the scripture on my mom, hey mom, just wait until they bloom, then we can tell them apart, that really wasn't the best thing for my younger brother. Now, the difference between the seedlings is in the stem. You have to look really closely. The ragweed was red, and the marigolds a dark purple. Now, unfortunately, sometimes we got them confused, and I'm sure that a many an innocent marigold seedling, seedling met its demise during those summer afternoons of weeding the flower bed. And if we thought discerning marigolds from ragweed seedlings was hard, <clears throat> in the first century, it was virtually impossible when it comes to discerning wheat from the cockle, the weed, that dreaded Mediterranean weed, until they were nearly full grown. <clears throat> you can only tell them apart once the ears appear. The ears of the real wheat are heavy, and will droop over. The cockle stands upright. Now cockle is bitter and toxic and will ruin the flower if it gets in it. And so the slaves were horrified to find that it was growing right under their nose. And not only that, they had cultivated it and made sure it had just the right conditions and yet it appeared. And so they began to question the master. What happened? Did you buy cheap seed? Is this some kind of mistake? And they're anxious about the quality of the harvest, and they feel like they need to do something about it and do something about it right now. But the master stops them, telling them that ripping the cockle would only hurt the wheat. Leave it alone until harvest time. And then he'll send out the professionals, the reapers. And then there will be discernment between the good wheat and the bad weeds. And of course, a fiery furnace and weeping and gnashing of teeth will be involved. Now remembering that a parable is a story that is not necessarily true, but does reveal truth about God, Jesus, or the kingdom of heaven. And probably, but that doesn't necessarily mean it isn't, but probably shouldn't be read as an allegory. Eh, maybe except this time. Maybe this is supposed to be read as an allegory. So who are those slaves? Could they be the disciples? Could they be the hearers of the parable? Could they be us? You know, us. The reality is, is that there is good and evil in this world, and they coexist. And the other reality is that sometimes it's not easy to tell the difference. In fact, sometimes it can be very, very hard to do. And what may appear and what we may think is good is, in fact, not very good. So what truth or truths are we to learn from this parable? So we are to do just what the master says. Wait and watch. Because God is at work in this world, even if we have difficulty seeing it. So we are to let God do God's job. And that's when we get into trouble anyway, when we try to be God and take the judgment job into our own hands and forget when Jesus says all, all means all. You see, church has a nasty habit of telling people who's in and who's out. 
And it was no different in the first century. And the people that Jesus hung around with were considered nothing but cockle. We do live in a time of confusion. This is a mixed up time of both good and bad. We are cockle and wheat together. We are saint and sinner together. We are at the same time, wheat and cockle, saint and sinner. Now looking at the Romans text assigned for today, we see that Paul has a unique way of describing our relationship with God through the work of the Holy Spirit. And it is so unique that among the New Testament writers, Paul is the only one who goes there. We are adopted into the family of God. We are beloved children of God. And as children of God, we have togetherness with God through the work of the Holy Spirit. And along with that togetherness, our adoption brings with it everything from suffering to inheritance to glorification and first fruits, that being of the Holy Spirit. Now, interesting here, Paul uses a string of verbs to describe this togetherness. And the translation from Greek to English loses an interesting component. Air, suffer, witness, glorify. In the Greek, they are all verbs. And they begin with a suffix that means with or co. And as Rob Myalis, a Greek scholar, pointed out, think of it this way. Co-witnesses, co-inheritors, co-sufferers, and co-glorified ers. We're co with Christ. And we have all of this with Christ. See, the story that Paul is telling here in a way that no other New Testament writer does is that God is not done with creation. Labor pains and earth groaning and all. And this creative endeavor is made known through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it runs through our very veins. And what we think of as just being in the future, you know, our own resurrection and the kingdom of God, heaven, Paul's pointing out that that's actually here and now in us, through us, with us. And we have a God that intrudes into the broken, groaning world to make it beautiful and wonderful and to remind us that God is indeed here. And what we see is cockle as we just might be wheat because the creative work of the one who loves us is not done. And that we are not to fear God because God is doing a new thing, a new thing through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And God has invited us along to be part of that. And the labor pains that Paul describes as the earth groans may be just that. As the Holy Spirit brings in a different way of thinking about ourselves and others. Meanwhile, we are called to live with this dualism for the sake of the fragile and vulnerable ones, realizing that faith at times is fragile too. And we are called to trust in the God that saves us. It is not our job to do the weeding. We are to continue to be disciples of Christ, witnessing to his goodness whenever and wherever we can and looking for that goodness, and maybe even be surprised at what we see. And witness, so that all will know, righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of our Father. Not just then, but here and now. All means all. To God be the glory. Amen.
join us as we sing our next hymn. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of the harvest, you sow the good seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ into your field. Help your church throughout the world to be diligent and patient, full of resolve and gentleness that our witness may be faithful to your intentions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all space and time, your whole creation groans in labor pains, awaiting the gift of new birth. Renew the earth, sky, and sea, so that all your creation experiences freedom from the bondage of decay. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the nations, teach us your ways that we may walk in your truth. Mend the fabric of the human family now torn apart by our fearful and warring ways. Guide us by your mercy, grace, and steadfast love. Lord, heal our land. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. God of hope, you accompany those who suffer and are near to the brokenhearted. Open our hearts to your children who are lonely and abandoned, who feel trapped by despair, and all who suffer in any way. Especially this day, we remember Paul Clausen, Dennis Sellers, Wanda Sellers, Bill Evans, Spike and Donna Roberts, Marty Martin, 
Spencer Kostler, all those who are on the front lines still fighting COVID-19, all those who have been affected by COVID-19 and who are now brokenhearted. Be with all of us as we are in this pandemic and all the other pandemics that afflict us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, those who have died in you shine like the sun in your endless kingdom. We remember with thanksgiving the saints of all times and places and saints close to us. Gather us with them on the day of salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time in our worship, we receive an offering, and we have so much to be grateful for. You all are just so generous. And as a result, we have met and exceeded our Daily Bread Challenge Grant, $850, $813.50. We'll go a long way to feed those who are hungry right here in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Because of you, the mission and ministry of Resurrection Lutheran Church continues as we reach and love and care. Thank you. 
gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Savior taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Join us in our celebration song. Receive the blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless us and keep us in eternal love. Amen. Amen. Join us as we sing our, our closing hymn, How Great Thou Art.
send you forth in mission this day just a quick reminder that this evening at 7 p.m we will have our monthly uh, theology pub pub theology and so you are welcome to bring beer wine water diet coke whatever to to the screen as we gather together via zoom link that is secure for um, theology pub this evening now if you have not received that link make sure that you put a note in our chat along with your email and we'll make sure that you get it go in peace christ is with you thanks, thanks be to god, to god.